So in this video, I would like to continue our discussion on, uh, about independent events. Um, so let's have a quick summary of what we saw last time. Um, we defined uh, conditional probability of A given B as probability of A and B divided by probability of B. And that was our notation on conditional probability. And we can write this as long as probability of B is non-zero. So and then uh, we defined independent events. We say that uh, in A and B are independent if probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times probability of B. And another way of writing independent, uh, independence is uh, to write it like this, probability of A given B is equal to probability of A. In other words, the additional information that the event B has occurred does not change probability of A. And similarly, we can write probability of B given A is equal to probability of B. We can write these two as long as probability of A and probability of B uh, are non-zero because we are conditioning on these things. So today uh, we would like to continue this discussion and provide some more examples and so on. So let's first look at a simple lemma here. Uh, the lemma says that if A and B are independent events, then A and B complement are independent. A complement and B are independent and A complement and B complement are independent. This is quite intuitive, uh, but also we can prove it uh, using uh, probability rules. So, you know, so what do we know here? We know that A and B are independent, so probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times probability of B. So let's prove, show this one quickly. What do we want to prove? We want to prove that A and B complement are independent. So it suffices to prove that probability of A and B complement is equal to probability of A times probability of B complement. Right? That's what we wanted to prove. So how do we show that? Well, um, one way of doing this, if you first of all, this is probability of A minus B, right? You know, A by definition of subtraction, A intersection with B complement is the same as A minus B. And we saw in one of the previous videos, probability of A minus B is always equal to probability of A minus probability of A and B, right? And that's great here because um, you know we have A intersection with B, so we can use independence. So this is equal to probability of A minus probability of A times probability of B. This is because A and B are independent, so the, the probability of the intersection is equal to the multiplication of their properties. Um, so here, if you factor probability of A, you obtain 1 minus probability of B, and this is equal to probability of A. And this is probability of B complement, right? So this is probability of B complement. So we proved that probability of A and B complement is equal to probability of A times probability of B complement. That's exactly what we wanted to prove. So we have, in fact, showed that A and B complement are independent. And similarly, we can show that A complement and B are independent, and A complement and B complement are independent. So sometimes we want to use this. Uh, for example, um, a general scenario is when we are looking for, uh, we are interested in the probability of union of some independent events. Remember, if uh, you know, if some events are independent, like A and B and C, it is easy to find the probability of their intersection, right? It's just probability of A times probability of B times probability of C if they are independent. But if we are interested in the probability of their union, what do we know? What, what can we do here? Because we cannot say it's just multiplication or addition or anything like that. But uh, a, a, a nice trick here is to write this as probability of A complement intersection with B complement intersection with C complement, the whole thing complement. What am I using here? De Morgan's law, right? This is equal to 1 minus probability of A complement and B complement and C complement. And, well, we use the little lemma there. We know that uh, A and B and C are uh, independent, so we conclude A complement, B complement, and C complement are independent, so we can write it as probability of A complement times probability of B complement and times probability of C complement. And uh, if you want to write it in terms of probability of A and B and C, we can write it as 1 minus probability of A times 1 minus probability of B times 1 minus probability of C. So that's a trick that we can use when we are uh, interested in probability of the union of some in, in, in independent events. Uh, this is a, like a general formula here, probability of if A and B, if A1, A2, A and up to A and are independent, then the probability of their union is given by this formula here. Okay, so let's look at uh, an example that uses this result to make sure that we uh, understand how to use it. This is uh, actually a simple example, but that's very interesting. We want to actually calculate the probability uh, of being killed in a, in a plane crash over a you know, 20 year period. So we want to see how safe 
uh, it is to fly. So the question is this. Suppose that we know that the probability of being killed in a single flight is this value here. P sub C is equal to 1 over 4 times 10 to the power of 6, based on available statistics. Assume that the different flights are independent. If a businessman takes 20 flights per year, what is the probability that he is killed in a plane crash within the next 20 years? And we assume that uh, you know, he will not die because of another reason within that period. Okay, so uh, please solve this question before uh, watching the rest of the video. So let's look at the solution here. Um, okay, so what do we know? Um, first of all, let's see how many flights that person takes in 20 years. Well, um, it's 20 years, 20 flights per year. So that the total number of flights, let's call it n, is equal to 20 times 20 becomes 400. That's total number of flights. And then the question is, what is the probability that uh, he's killed in a plane uh, you know, crash? So basically, let's AI, like, like A1 or AI, let's say, be the event that the, the, he's killed in the i flight, right? In the i uh, flight. So we are interested in the probability of A1 union A2 up to AN, right? So we are interested in the probability that he is killed in at least one of the flights. So that probability, again by this uh, formula that we just uh, showed here, is 1 minus 1 minus probability of A1 and 1 minus probability of A2 1 minus probability of AN. What am I using here? The independence. We assume that you know different flights are independent, which is a you know reasonable assumption here. Um, now, what is probability of AI? Uh, it's given in the question. Uh, this is probability. This piece of C here, uh, the probability of being killed in a single uh, flight. So it's one over ten to the power of six. Um, so what we obtain is probability of, you know, let's call this union, the event that he's killed, A, is equal to <clears throat> 1 minus, 1 minus, and they are all equal, this. So 1 minus 4 times 10 to the power of 6, uh, to the power of n, which is 400. And you can do the math to find this, what this value is. Let me see if I can find my calculator here. Um, so we find the properties. Uh, yeah, it's almost... Um, 10 to the power of minus 4, which is, you know, 1 over 10,000. So basically, uh, you know, the chance of being killed uh, in, in 20 years uh, when the person takes 20 flights per year is only 1 over 10,000. And note that 20 flights per year is more than what most people take. So, and then uh, in the whole 20-year period, the probability is quite low. Okay. So... I want to talk about a common mistake that uh, you know usually people make. Uh, so it is very common to confuse the, the two concepts: the, con uh, the concept of disjoint events and independent events. These are completely different concepts. So remember, we say that two events are disjoint if uh, their intersection is empty. In other words. These two events are disjoint if they cannot occur at the same time. For example, if I roll a die and I, and I define the one event to be the event that the outcome is an even number and the other event that the outcome is either one or three, these two events are disjoint because, you know, they don't share any elements. They cannot occur at the same time. If A happens, B does not happen and so on. Independent, on the other hand, as we discussed, means that Knowing that B has occurred does not change our belief about the probability of A. So these are completely different issues, and this table summarizes the difference between these uh, concepts. So if two events are disjoint, we know that A and B cannot occur at the same time. And in terms of formula, we know that you know their intersection is empty, and the probability of their union is equal to probability of A plus probability of B, because they, they, they do not show, uh, share any element, they, they do not overlap. If two events are uh, disjoint, like here, this is A and this is B, then probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. On the other hand, if two events are independent, then uh, we say that A does not give any information about B. And in terms of formulas, 
we know the probability of their intersection is equal to probability of A times probability of B. In fact, uh, if two events are disjoint, right? So if A and B are disjoint, and assume that you know their probability is not zero, so you know it's more interesting to talk about the event that uh, have non-zero probabilities. If we know that A and B are disjoint, then what can we say about probability of A and B? Well, it's going to be zero because this set is empty. On the other hand, you know this is of course is not equal to probability of A times probability of B if we assume that you know the probabilities are non-zero. So in the conclusion here is that if uh, a and B disjoint, so the conclusion that we have here is A and B disjoint, if A and B are disjoint and their probabilities are non-zero, then A and B are not independent. And it is, you know, quite clear intuitively, because independence means that if we know B has occurred, uh, our belief about probability of A does not change. But if A and B are disjoint, then if we know B has occurred, then A cannot happen. So probability of A given B is equal to zero. And uh, so the conclusion here is that these are completely different concepts, disjoint and independent. And make sure that you do not confuse them. Okay, so let's look at a one last uh, problem in this video. So the example is this. I toss a coin repeatedly until I observe a tails. And let x be the total number of coin tosses. So I, you know, toss the coin, and let's say I obtain heads, 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 and then tails, and then I stop. In this case, uh, my x is equal to uh, four because it took me four mm, trials until I observed the tails. So the question is, what is the probability that x is equal to three, and what is the probability that x is less than five? So I suggest that you solve this problem before watching the rest of the video. Okay, so let's solve this problem. Well, first of all. Probability of x equals to 3. x equals to 3 can only happen if the outcome uh, that we observed here is heads, heads, and tails. And, you know, and we don't care about the rest. We just stop at that point. So that's the only way I can observe x equals to 3, right? So probability of x equals to 3 is probability that I observe heads, heads, and tails. So first coin toss results in heads, second in heads, and the last one, the third one in tails. And because we assume that coin tosses are independent, again, that's a very important assumption here. And independent, and that's a reasonable assumption. So this is equal to probability of heads times probability of heads times probability of t. Uh, and again, if the coin is fair, again, that's another implied assumption here. This becomes 1 half, 1 half, 1 half, so the probability is 1 over 8. So part b. What is the probability that x is less than 5? When if x is less than 5, it must be either 1, 2, 3, or 4, right? So we are interested in probability of x less than 5 is equal to probability that x is equal to 1. Or x is equal to 2, or x equals to 3, or x is equal to 4, right? We are interested in this uh, probability. Now, what can we say here? Well, we have the... Maybe I replace these ORs by union. This is the same uh, concept, right? OR is the same as union. When we say OR, we mean union. Remember the third axiom of probability, right? Note that these are disjoint events. If x is equal to 1, then x cannot be equal to 2. x can be just one of these values. So all of these are disjoint events. So in fact, what we can say is that the property of the union is the summation of their probabilities. So then the problem is uh, becomes uh, similar to the first part of the problem. When when the probability of x equals to one is is that when my first try my first coin toss results uh, in tails, x equals to is the probability that I get first I observe a tail, heads and then a tails, and x equals to 3, and then probability of x equals to 4. So the probability of tails uh, in, in the, my first coin toss is 1 half. This is, again, because they are independent, it's probability of heads times probability of tails, plus this is probability of heads times probability of heads times probability of tails. Uh, again, this part is the independence assumption. And finally, the last one is probability of heads, probability of heads, probability of heads, times probability of tails. 
so then it's one half plus this is one half times one half plus one half one half one half so one half one half one half plus and the last one is one half times one half times one half times one half it becomes one half plus one fourth plus one eight plus one over sixteen uh, let's do quickly what sorry, so it becomes eight plus four plus two plus one and I think it becomes fifteen over sixteen. So the interesting thing about this problem is that we uh, we had both disjoint events and independent events, and we use both uh, you know results, both formulas for independent and disjoint events. Okay, thank you.